Hey y'all. Some of you know me, some of you don't, um, and some of you know my story, and some of you don't. Um, but I've been writing a book for about four years on and off, and honestly, I just can't seem to write it. Um, <laughs> one of those things, I guess, where I just don't have the words to write. Um, I just kind of have them in my heart. And so I thought I would take a break from writing for a while and I would just share with you what God's put on my heart for the last about four or five years um, and what my story is and what I've been through and where God's brought me and where I am now. So that's really all this channel is about. Um, I want to share hope. There's a lot of hopelessness in the world, um, a lot of unfairness, rejection, hatred, lies, um, and I don't want to listen to it anymore. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really tired of sitting back and watching my friends' lives get destroyed, and I watched part of my life get destroyed, and... I don't want to sit back anymore. I want to see something done about it, and I want to catch the enemy um, in the middle of him trying to lie to the world. If you're not for it, that's totally fine, but I really want to share what I believe God has been saying for a really long time to not just my generation, but to generation after generation after generation. Really simply, my story starts when I was really young, but most of it happened about the time I turned 20. Um, I didn't know God at all growing up, <laughs> at all. A lot of you who grew up with me can vouch to that. I have an amazing family, but we went through a whole lot of hard times, and I can share that in a different episode. But... At about 17, I discovered um, that I just didn't have much to live for. And one day, I actually, I would say God found me, but I just kind of fell in love with Jesus. I found out who he was, and I didn't know anything. I'd never opened a Bible. I didn't know what the little numbers were on the sides, but I did know his voice. And the only reason I knew his voice was because I wanted to. I sat down in an altar somewhere in Wisconsin, because I'm from Minnesota, and I was 17 on some youth trip that my best friend tricked me into, and I met Jesus. And from that day forward, I asked that he would make me very, very, very different, and he did. He made me really different. And I asked him to show himself to me in ways, obviously, I've never known. And he came alive. And I never knew that Jesus could be or was alive at all. I had no idea. Um, some of you are probably thinking I'm crazy. Others of you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I promise you, he's alive. Uh, when I was 17, I would say I got saved. And at 18, I went into college uh, optimistically. <laughs> uh, you know, how you have that idea of everything is going to work out perfect. And I wanted to be in ministry. I wanted to be a preacher and travel the world and share Jesus with everyone under the sun because everyone, I believe, needs to know him and fall in love with him because he changes your life. And at 20, I got married. And that's kind of where my story begins. Slash kind of where it begins. Um, where I'm going to begin today. And some of you knew me at this time and know how much um, I've gone through. And... I guess as you listen, uh, maybe just have an open heart. Um, 
some of you are actually going through exactly what I'm going to talk about and others of you have not a clue the pain that comes with it. But maybe you know somebody that's gone through it. So maybe it'll give you some grace for them and be able to help you love them more or love them through one of the hardest times of their life. So uh, at 20, I got married to my very best friend, amazing man of God, um, and someone I believe that he I was going to spend the rest of my life with. And we said, I do. And we got married. And a month later, our life, we realized, wasn't as easy and glamorous as we thought. Everyone who's married out there knows it's not always a cakewalk. And it's difficult. And it's at work. But it's supposed to be joyous at the same time, which it is. But ours just got hard. A lot of stuff came up in our life because you never enter marriage without a little baggage. And instead of just unpacking little by little, we unpacked all at once, is how I would kind of put it. And we went through a really rough first year, and it started changing my life. And I realized what I didn't like about myself, and I realized what I didn't like about him. And I think we both realized that marriage wasn't going to be what we thought it would be. And so I never gave up. And we fought very hard for a very long time. And our second year rolled around and it didn't get better. Um, we moved uh, to go to an internship for a couple months, came back, and it was just as bad. The next year went by and we ended up moving to the place where we had our internship. And while we were there, we discovered that life was even harder in the mission field because we went to be church planners and were full-time missionaries in a very hard place. And we hit a lot of it really, really well. And about I would say, honestly, our third year of marriage or so, I realized something wasn't right. And I think he realized something wasn't right. And um, we ended up joining, he joined the military, and I became a military wife. We moved from the mission field and went on to another one because... Um, I support all of our troops, but it is a really, really hard place to be. And for a year, I barely saw my husband. And I started having dreams. And dreams that weren't good. Dreams that I thought my husband was having an affair. Um, stuff that didn't make sense because I love my husband very much. And while he went to go finish school, um, I actually went home to Minnesota to be with my family for a couple weeks till he graduated. And I just knew something wasn't right. And I got a phone call on September 17th, 2012 that changed my life for the rest of my life and made me into the person I am today, but I would never wish on a single soul my whole life. And for those of you that have gone through it, I'm so sorry. And my heart goes out to you, but there's so much hope. I got a phone call from my husband that day telling me that he was no longer in love with me, that he was in love with somebody else, and that he'd been having an affair, and that he didn't believe in God anymore, and he walked away, and he left me. 
I was 24 years old. And immediately the first thing I knew I was supposed to do, which is not the same for everyone, but I knew I was supposed to fight for my marriage. So for the next six months, I moved to where he was and I tried very hard to work on our marriage. And it didn't work. And a couple years later, we ended up getting a divorce because he was still with somebody else and he didn't pursue me and he didn't come and get me. Some of your stories aren't like that. Mine is. But mine doesn't end there. Um, I went through hell, through the pit of hell, for years. And I sought a lot of help and a lot of prayer. And I never gave up on the Lord. God is the only reason I get to be here today to share my story. Because there's so much hope that it's um, it overwhelms me. And I hope it does you too. Um, three, about a, two years after that, I moved, um, to a place where I thought was a horrible, I didn't want to be there. Oh, I'm so sorry anybody watching who I lived with, because it was really bad. I was not the best person to be around, because when you're broken, you tend to break people. And please give each other grace, because... It's because of those people being patient with me and graceful with me that they helped me get it through it. But ultimately, God taught me true restoration and taught me that there is nothing that the enemy can take that God doesn't make him restore. And that it will be double fold for those who are faithful, for those who are following him. But... And truly, it is the worst pain in the whole world. But I really do, and I'll go into detail more about certain things. And if you have questions or you want me to talk about a certain um, situation you might be going through, I would love to share my life. Because I think it's through our testimonies and through our stories with each other that we can help each other overcome stuff. But... The awesome part about my story is that I truly believe in double fold. I believe that God can restore not only what was, but double what it ever was, just like Job. And if you don't know who Job is, it's a, it's a person in the Bible who had everything taken away and God gave it back double. Anyway, and so I just want to say when I was about 27 I started really praying about you know if God's will for me was to be with anybody else the rest of my life because I'd been divorced for quite some time and I'd been without my husband longer than I had been with him now and I was single again and with that you know when you're married it's one thing and when you're single it's another and it's a whole nother ball game being married and then single compared to single then married some of you know what I'm talking about and honestly um, I never had a desire to get remarried I didn't <laughs> I didn't I kind of had dealt with that I wanted to be single and share the Lord with everybody and share my story and share hope with people and travel and speak but I never really thought I'd settle down and be married. Um, and then God started birthing a desire in my heart for my husband. And my soon-to-be husband. And at that time, I had no idea who he was. And ironically, um, God has not only restored what was, he's given me double. I am happily married again to my husband, Skylar Fleming, and he is the most godly man I could have ever imagined in my entire life. 
and I'm sorry, I'm emotional because I'm pregnant and I'm sitting in our nursery waiting for our baby to come and I thought I'd never be a mom again. I never thought I'd have the opportunity. And now I'm not only sitting here completely restored and whole, <laughs> but I'm sitting here because of all those people who prayed for me and the God who gives so much hope. And I'm sitting here because I get to tell you that God is so good and he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you and he'll never let you down. He's so good, you guys. I promise whatever pit of hell you are walking through, he is good. And he will help you get through it. And he will give you more than you can ever fathom or imagine. Just trust him. I know it's hard. But he is really worth it. Guys, thanks so much. Sorry I'm a mess. <laughs> I guess it's what happens when you get pregnant. It's emotional and... <sighs> I really wasn't prepared for that, but I know it was really long, but I just wanted to tell you guys that I don't know who I'm talking to. I have no idea who's watching this, if anyone ever watches this, because some people might never, <laughs> but there's hope for you, and I would love to pray for you, and I would love to talk with anybody who needs help, and if you're going through the hardest place you've ever been, I promise you hold on. Because it's in those places that diamonds come out. You're getting refined. And I promise you it's going to be better. You just have to be faithful to him like he's faithful to you. It may not seem like it, but I promise he is. Once again, um, you can go on my page. I'm going to be posting different videos um, just about my story and different experiences and everything I've had to kind of walk through. And if you want me to talk to you about something, I will absolutely do it. If you want to email me, go ahead. It's Christy Lee Fleming at gmail.com. It's on my page, and I look forward to talking to you guys again. Thanks.